Hi, this is Rick. I'm here in my studio. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Sorwitz Watercolor. At any time during the video, you can click on the link that appears in the lower right hand corner to subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more of my videos or learn more about my self-paced courses or live classes, you can click on the links that appear at the end of the video. So in this video, I'll be doing uh, this landscape. And this is an imaginary landscape and it's uh, going to be uh, using a sketch in a sketchbook for reference. So this is just a very simple sketch that I did in my sketchbook. Uh, just drew it with a, a waterproof pen and then uh, put some watercolor over it. It's completely imaginary and I'm just going to paint that in an 8x10 format here. So it's a smaller format than one of the smaller formats that I paint and I normally paint larger. Um, but I'm going to be working here at 8x10. I'm working on 140 pound cold press watercolor paper and I'm working at about a 10, uh, 20 degree angle. So let's go ahead and we'll just get started with this. And uh, I'm just going to start with a big wash brush. And I'm going to use some uh, cerulean blue. I'm going to paint that background sky and use a little raw sienna. And this is uh, gonna be a, a vignette. Uh, so I'll be showing uh, a lot of the white of the paper. So that raw sienna and, and uh, cerulean gives me just kind of a neutral blue-gray sky. I'm gonna add a little water to this. You can see I'm using a very lar fairly large wash brush. There's no reason for me to use a teeny tiny brush to paint this this wash. So there is that. Now I'm going to take a little uh, cobalt blue and maybe a little alizarin crimson. And let's see, more blue. That's one of violets. Kind of a nice violet tone here. So I'm not working wet and wet, however, I'm working adjacent to a wet edge, so I'll get a little bit of softness on the top edge of that. And I think I might uh, go up just a little bit just to help it along, make it feel a little more like it's in a distance, giving me a soft edge there. And um, next, I'm gonna paint this area here in with kind of a, a light, uh, blue green and I'm going to give that one a little more edge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this and I'm going to put a wash in here because uh, I want to keep this uh, a little more a little harder edge than what I've done there so let me give this a quick dry so that's dry I actually want to have a little bit more edge on that it started to wash out a little more than what I wanted so I'm going to put a little bit of this this violet back in here. Take some clear water. Just soften that uh, a little bit. So that gives me a little bit of edge, but a little bit of lost edge. And now I'm going to take. Uh, let's clean this a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of my sap green. This is a color I like to use. And I want a bit of a blue-green in this now, so I'm going to take some ultramarine. Get a little more blue. I'm going to add a little alizarin crimson. Tone that down some. But I still want more, leaning more towards blue. I put a little too much green on the palette. So that'll give me what I want. And I'm going to keep it fairly light. I'm going to paint this distant uh, piece of land back here. And I'm going to give a little bit of, I'm actually going to get a number six round brush here. It's got a little more of a point so I can give a little more character to the top edge of this, this shape.
And I'm going to bring that down. Just use a little clear water to get some gradation and let that just kind of work its way down. Okay. Now, once again, uh, I want to have uh, clean edges here. I don't, I don't want the, this to blend with what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this to give me a nice clean layer. Okay, so that's dry. And I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to use my number six brush here. And I'm going to get some raw sienna. Take some of this green mixture that I've got here and we'll see where that gets us. So I'm going to put in these little tree shapes. There's kind of symbols, some evergreens. Got a little of this uh, raw sienna going in here. A little bit of water. Okay, now I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get a little bigger brush. Add some water. I want this thinned out a little bit. Could be some trees there. I'm going to get a little more of the raw sienna. This is going to be a backdrop for these dark trees that I'm going to put in here. So now I'm going to take this Got a gold green color across here. I want to make sure I have enough moisture in my brush to cover this. I don't want a bunch of uneven areas of uneven coverage. I want that to just be a nice wash right there. Yeah, I'm going to take uh, and just touch the bottom edge a little bit here and there. Not all the way. I'm going to have some breaks in it. Uh, right along the bottom there, just to give me a dark value. And I'm going to uh, work with some of this sap green, a little bit of red in that. I'm going to work a kind of a lone standing tree. I'm going to work that right into this wash that I already put down. Yeah, I'm not going to get too fussy with that. So now I'm going to dry that. I dry it in between these layers depending on the edge, and this is a very small painting. Um, so now let me give that a dry. Okay, that's dry. And I'm going to take uh, this is an eight round brush. I'm going to take some quinacridone and gold. I want that to be a little more intense than my raw sienna. So I'm going to take some of that. I'm going to put this like this as an open field here, or an open edge. Maybe I'll take just a little of this, just a touch of raw sienna in there, just to give some gradation. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna take this is a, a quill brush that I use. And I want a darker mixture here, so I'm gonna take some royal blue, a little lizard crimson, and gray this green down or neutralize it a little bit, move it more towards neutral. Let's see. 
use a couple combinations of green there's pyro red again to make that more neutral yeah, we'll see we'll go with this so pretty dark value and I want to get some of that blue green tone in here too so well that something in here get change that color up a little bit get some variety I can make some little grassy shapes if I want here. Don't like that mark. Make a few marks here. Okay. I'll take a little bit of this red. I'm going to just touch it here on the bottom. value here okay so I'm gonna dry that and then I'm gonna start to bring some washes down here all right so again I'm gonna leave this uh, a, a vignette you can see those washes that I've had there in the in the sketchbook and I'm gonna do something very similar here I'm just gonna Take some of these colors. I'm gonna leave a bit of a break right where it hits the shoreline, leave some light and let some of it also go over it. Get a little bit of that blue, blue green in here. And let's see if I can get a little bit uh, I mean, cobalt blue mixture. Drop some of the of gold tone in. I'm going to get a little bigger brush here. Get a little break. Get some of this blue green. Get some raw sienna. stronger color in here so maybe a little strong
Put some of that blue green in there. Got this excess, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a, a fine mist spray, you know, create a little softer uh, edges, let that run a little bit. Okay, I'm going to dry that now. Okay, that's dry. And I could go, I could do a little more detail, some rendering, I could put some darker values in here, but I'm going to keep this nice and simple, just a very simple little painting. Again, this is all from imagination. Started with a little sketch uh, in my sketchbook, and then just you know, put it on a, an 8x10. I could have made it a 11x15, a quarter sheet or something. Um, but there you go. I hope you enjoyed that.